90.4 FM. Social expectation drowns us all inside. What you have should be what I want, cause what I have just ain't alright. The clothes I wear, the way I comb my hair, how I live, oh, I don't care. This is who I am, this is me. Nothing ever can get you see who I am. Just let me be, cause like it or not, this guy loves me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're listening to Radio Walansar 90.4 FM in the Durban area, 105.6 FM in the Peter Marisburg area. This is Ismail Kamda coming to you live with our first episode of Living Islam for 2016 every Tuesday evening between 9.30 and 10.30 p.m. right here on Radio Walansar Living Islam bringing Islam to a, uh, bringing you a practical guide to living and practicing Islam in the modern world and our theme for the past few months has been on goal setting self help personal development all from an Islamic perspective and for those of you who are not aware last year in April I launched a new website called islamicselfhelp.com that's islamicselfhelp.com and I have been working on various articles and ebooks on these topics of personal development, books on time management and self confidence, which are available at the Aransal bookstore. And I've also written a free ebook, which is actually going to be the uh, the basis for my topics for the next ten episodes. Right? If you go to my website islamicselfhelp.com and you click on the button free ebook, um, you will get a copy of my ebook. 10 self-help tips from 10 authentic hadiths. Now, in this ebook, I take 10 hadiths, and for each one, from each one, I explain its importance in personal development. Right? These may be hadiths that you are familiar with, but probably from a fiqh or aqidah perspective. Yeah, I'm explaining the hadiths from a different perspective. And so, this is going to be the theme for the next 10 episodes of Living Islam. I'm going to look at the same 10 hadiths which you will find in my ebook, and I'm going to explain one hadith per show. So that means this week we're going to look at hadith number one from that book, right? Next week we'll look at hadith number two, then hadith number three onwards. And I chose 10 hadiths which I believe are amongst the most general, the most powerful, and are the most relevant uh, to personal development. And this is the beauty of Quran and hadith that the revelation of Islam much of it has been worded in such a general manner that it can apply to many different topics. And so you'll find that the hadiths that we will look at over the next few weeks, you will find those hadiths applied in every single topic. For example, the hadith we are going to look at today on intentions. You will find this hadith in personal development, in purification of the soul, in many different chapters of fiqh, in aqidah, in etiquettes of seeking knowledge, it pops up everywhere because it is so general and so broad in its meaning. At the same time, it's so powerful in its implications in every area of life. And this is why we say Islam is a way of life. That when you look at the Quran and when you analyze the hadith, you will find that they apply to every aspect of your life. And so we've been speaking over the past few weeks about goal setting and having a vision. This week, we are going to move on to look at a hadith related to something which is very closely linked to goal setting. And that is niyyah, intentions. Why intentions? Well, every goal has an intention. Every goal has a motive. Every goal has a reason why you chose that goal over any other goal. And as Muslims, we must realize that when it comes to our goals, the intention is crucial. Because a goal which has a noble intention will be rewarding to chase. And, it will, and you will have the assistance of Allah in chasing that goal. But a goal which has an evil intention, even if the goal itself is good, but if the intention is evil, Allah will not help you. There will be no barakah and there will be no reward. In fact, there may be sin for chasing that goal. And so as Muslims, we don't look at goal setting from a secular perspective. We look at it from a perspective of 
pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you've downloaded the ebook and again that's islamicselfhelp.com, you click on the button free ebook and you press the download button, you will get a PDF, 10 self-help tips from 10 authentic hadiths. And in this ebook, if you open up to hadith number one, it is the same hadith that begins Sahih al-Bukhari. And it is the same hadith that begins an hour with 40 hadiths. And it is with the same hadith that I begin the 10 self-help tips. Why? Because this hadith is so powerful. This hadith, Imam Ash-Shafi called it one third of knowledge. Really, if you know this hadith, you understand one third of our religion. It is that deep, it is that powerful. You will study it in almost any aspect of Islamic studies. And that is the hadith al niyyah hadith al-ikhlas, the hadith of sincere intentions. The hadith goes as follows. An Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu qala, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, innama al-a'malu bin niyat wa li rajli ma nawah. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated every action is judged by its niyyah, by its intention and every man will get what they intended. Now this hadith is amongst the most powerful hadiths that you will find. As I mentioned, Imam Bukhari begins his sahih with this hadith. Imam al nawawi begins the 40 hadith with the same hadith. It is unanimously agreed that this hadith is authentic. It comes to us through just one sahabi, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, one of the greatest of the sahaba, the greatest after Abu Bakr ibn al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Umar ibn al-Khattab is the narrator of this hadith and those of you who do not know who Umar ibn al-Khattab is, you know, uh, he was the second khalif of Islam, he was um, the one of the closest companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and he was one of the most influential men in the history of this world. Really, you should know this name. If you are a Muslim, you should know who Umar ibn Khattab is. If not, you need to go back and study your history because this is one of the most central figures in the history of Islam. So important that even the non-Muslims have listed him amongst the most influential men in history. Even non-Muslims like Michael J. Hart in his... Uh, book the 100 most influential people in the world where he listed Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as number one the only other name from amongst the sahaba to be on that list was Umar ibn al-Khattab so this is no ordinary man this was amongst the greatest of men no matter what his enemies say about him radiallahu anhu Allah is pleased with him and Allah used him to accomplish great things for this ummah from amongst the things which Allah has benefited us through this sahabi is that he is the one who heard this from the mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and passed it on to those who were attending his khutbah and they passed it on to the next generation until it reached Imam al-Bukhari who wrote it down as the first book of his sahih and from there it reached the entire Muslim world and so this is the hadith of intentions now in order to understand this hadith and its implications there are three Arabic words that you need to be familiar with and I'm going to very basically give you the definitions of these three Arabic words the first is niya the second is ikhlas and the third is riya again niya ikhlas riya right what do these three words mean niya means intention Right? Niya means intention. Why do we do what we do? That's basically what your niya is. Your why. Right? Why are you praying? Why are you fasting? Why are you listening to Radio Al Ansar? Why are you sleeping? Why are you working? Everything you are doing has a niya. Everything you do has a niya. It has an intention. A niya is a general term. It can be something good or bad. There is good niya and there is bad niya. Now, a good niya is called ikhlas which literally means sincerity, right? So you have ikhlas niya, a sincere intention. This is a good intention. For example, someone says, I am listening to Radio Al-Ansar right now so I can learn about the deen, so I can become a better Muslim. This is ikhlas niya. This is a good reason to be listening to the radio station, right? So uh, if someone may say, I am praying salah to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is ikhlas niya. This is a good reason to be praying your salah. Someone may say, I am wearing the hijab 
to please Allah. This is ikhlas sunniyah. It is a good intention. So ikhlas refers to a sincere good intention. The opposite of ikhlas sunniyah is riya, which translates into English as showing off, showing off, right? And showing off in Islam is considered a bad intention. So, for example, if someone is delivering a lecture in order that people may praise him, this is riya, and he is sinful for giving that lecture. If someone is praying salah so that other people call him pious, this is riya, and he is sinful for praying salah with that intention. If someone is fasting so that people will look up to him and people will praise him, then this is riya and this is a sin. And riya is amongst the most dangerous of sins because it is so difficult to detect and it creeps up on us without us even realizing it. And it is very difficult to get rid of. In fact, you know, many people ask me this question and I actually have a video about this on YouTube uh, on the topic of riya. Many people ask me, how do we get rid of riya? Right, the question is, how do we get rid of it all together? You know, they don't have to worry about Riyah ever again. And the answer is, you can't. You can't do that. Because Allah has created this thing, this, this desire to show off insi inside our nafs as a ongoing jihad nafs as a ongoing struggle against our soul. The jihad nafs against Riyah, the struggle within ourselves against showing off, it goes on until we die. There's no way to rid yourself of it completely. You will, throughout your life, face times and situations where this creeps up again. All we can do is fight it. And fight it for the rest of your life. Right? So how do you fight Riyah? Number one, you always renew your intentions. You always make sure that whatever you do, you do it with a good intention. You always question yourself. You always ask yourself, why am I doing what I am doing? So a good intention, always renewing, always questioning, always introspecting, this can help you to avoid Riyah. The second thing that can help you to avoid Riyah is to make dua every day to Allah to keep your heart steadfast upon His obedience because it is Allah who can protect us from falling into this. The third thing we can do to avoid Riyah is to have good friends. Have good company. Have friends who will correct you when you have wrong intentions. Have friends who will guide you back to the straight path when you are getting egotistical. Those are the friends that you need. Not the friends that will pat you on the back and launch you up higher into space. Not the friends who will inflate your head and ego even more. No, no, no. You need friends who will help you to avoid Riyah. And so, these are the three Arabic terms to understand in order to understand this hadith. So what is the hadith talking about, right? The Prophet wasallam stated that every action is judged by its intention and everybody gets what they intended. So what does this mean? Well, on a very basic level, right, it means that whatever reason you did a deed, that will decide on whether you are rewarded or punished for that deed. However, this does not apply to sins. Meaning, if you did a sin with a good intention, you're still going to be punished for it. Good intentions do not justify sins. Right? This is the exception to the hadith. Right? When the hadith says every action is judged by its intentions, it does not include sins. Because a sin done with a good intention is still a sin. Right? Someone who robs the bank to give to the poor, it is still robbing a bank, it is still a major sin. It is not justified on the basis of this hadith. So let's be clear about that. This hadith is not referring to sins, it's referring to good deeds and worldly acts. So your good deeds in Islam are only considered good deeds when they have a good intention. And if they have a bad intention, they are not considered good deeds. And if they have no intention, they are not considered good deeds. What do I mean by no intention? For example, some people pray salah to please Allah. That is ikhlas sunniyah. That is a good intention. Some people pray salah so that other people will see them praying. This is riya. This is showing off. This is the wrong intention. Some people pray salah because it's a ritual and they have no idea why they are praying. They have no intention. There's no reward for that because they're not doing it for Allah. They're doing it as an empty ritual. And so ikhlas sunniyah means that you know why you are doing what you are doing. So every good deed must have a good intention. 
This also means that your worldly acts, like setting your goals, like uh, working, like spending time with your family, if you have a good intention for doing any of these things, then they become rewarding. But if you have an evil motive, they can become sinful. And if you have no motive, they remain halal. So, our entire life revolves around our intentions. The only exception being sins. There is no justification of sins based on good intentions. So we need to take a break now. When we return, we will continue talking about the hadith of intentions and we will talk in more details about how it relates to goal setting. So don't go away. We'll be right back after this break. Radio al the only Muslim community radio station in KZN. The al is a monthly community publication that has 10,000 homes and businesses flipping across KZN. It's current, it's vibrant, it's informative. News, views, interviews and reviews. Health, beauty, fitness, fashion and food. Motoring, travel and DIY. So do yourself a favor and get your free copy of al Uma now. For competitive advertising inquiries, please contact Uma at alansar.co.za or call 031-208-1601. Have you helped quench the thirst of your Muslim brother? Sponsor a water well for only 9,500 rands in Africa or a borehole for just 40,000 rands as a means of sadaqa jariya for a deceased loved one. Africa Muslims Agency has built over 15,000 water wells and boreholes in Africa. Special monthly payments can be arranged to suit you. Contact Africa Muslims Agency now on 031-207-5676 or donate online at africamuslimsagency.co.za African Muslims Agency, the agency that cares. Water awareness in the life of a Muslim. Whilst making wudu, one should not let the tap run continuously. The tap should not be opened full. Whilst making masah, etc., one should close the tap. Suleiman sumptuous savouries. Opening specials. Samosas, unfried, mince, chicken, potato and tinfish, 20 rand per dozen. Fried, mince and chicken, 3 rands each. Potato and tinfish, 2 rand 50 each. Spring rolls, 4 rand each. Bhajjas, 1 rand each. And coming soon. Rotis, mini pizzas and pies Crispy, spicy and hot Visit us at 52 Todd Street, Verulam Or call 0786-299-491 We also do platters for all occasions One student, one laptop to all first year students Experience the awesomeness of success in education With your leading private higher education provider Oval International Expand your mind, change your world The creator of the world's first virtual study room for anywhere, anytime education at your fingertips. Free laptops to all first year students. T's and C's apply. Degrees, diplomas and certificate programs. Register now. Call Oval International on 0860 or log on to www.oval.co.za to find a campus near you. The sun, the sand and a mocktail in my hand. Summertime, Radio al Corpsville 105.6 FM Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh You're listening to Living Islam on Radio Al-Ansar I'm your host Ismail Kamda We're talking about the hadith on intentions Ikhlas and niyyah And its relationship to goal setting For, sto- for, for, for those of you all who just joined us We are talking on the uh, hadith of uh, self-help um, these hadiths are taken from my free ebook, 10 Self Help Tips from 10 Authentic Hadiths, which is available at my blog, islamicselfhelp.com. You just go to the blog, you click on the button free ebook, and you can download it, and from there you can follow along with the hadiths that we will be discussing over the next 10 weeks. So, hadith number one, we said, is the hadith that every uh, action is judged by its intention, and everybody gets what they intended. Now, this hadith we said refers primarily to our deeds. And <clears throat> the most important context for this hadith is that when you do a good deed, you must make sure that you are doing it for the sake of Allah and not for any selfish or worldly motivations. Right? Uh, but this hadith does not only apply to deen, it does not only apply to ibadah, it also applies to our worldly life. It also applies to goal setting. You may ask how? What does setting goals have to do with Ikhlas and Niyyah? Well, goals 
are based on intentions. Right? Every goal that you set, there is an intention behind it. You chose this goal over another goal because there's something that's motivating you to do it. If that intention behind the goal is something which is displeasing to Allah, Allah is not going to help you and to assist you in achieving your goals. There will be no barakah in that effort. But if your goal is noble, if your goal, goal is something pleasing to Allah, if your intentions behind it are pleasing to Allah, then Allah will assist you. There will be barakah, there will be miracles. Allah will make sure that you accomplish it because it is for the benefit of this ummah. Therefore, as Muslims, when we set our goals, we do not just look at the worldly results. We do not just look at it from a selfish or materialistic perspective. We look at it holistically. We look at it from a religious perspective. We first ask ourselves, is this goal pleasing to Allah? Is the way of achieving it halal? Is it going to benefit the ummah? These are things that we need to ask ourselves when we are setting our goals. Now, many people, you know, they may say that... Uh, Goal setting is a secular thing, it's a worldly thing. So why am I bringing deen into it? And for those people the answer is very simple. In Islam there is no such thing as secular. There is no such thing as separation of religion and worldly life. This show is called living Islam because really Islam is not a religion, it's a way of life. Islam dictates every aspect of your life. And I know nowadays there's the secular movement that's trying to separate religion, you know, from 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 uh, worldly life, and they're discouraging the woman from wearing hijab, and they're telling people to boycott Hajj and all other kinds of things which are completely un-Islamic. We need to understand something very clearly. Our religion is holistic, and our religion covers every aspect of your life, from how you sleep to what you eat to what you say to what you do to your manners, to your business, to your goals, everything is governed by the teachings of Islam. So, when you are setting your goals, you need to think about Allah. You need to think about whether these goals are pleasing to Allah. So, what we're going to discuss over the next half an hour, is we're going to look at those intentions that you should avoid. Those intentions which are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we will look at those intentions which are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how all of this relates to goal setting. So let's begin with the wrong intentions. Right? And many of us, when we set our goals, unfortunately, we do have these wrong intentions. <clears throat> the first one is fame. And I'm starting off with fame because nowadays in this age of social media, in this age of the internet where it is so easy to become famous overnight, all you need is one viral video, one viral tweet, you know, uh, too many people are doing things for the sake of fame. Now, understand something here. If you do something for the sake of Allah, and because you chose to do that for the sake of Allah, Allah made you famous, that's not a bad thing. Right? Allah put you in that position so that you can influence more people. But if you did something Islamic, something noble, something good, but your only intention was to become famous, that is hypocritical. That is un-Islamic. And that will earn you the hellfire. So my brothers and sisters, when you are setting your goals, your intention should not be fame. Your intention should not be I want to be famous. I want people to like me. I want people to ask for my autograph. I want people to look up to me. All of this is not important to the believer. Because when we die, it doesn't matter how famous you were. All that matters is whether Allah was pleased with you or not. And don't be deceived by fame. If fame was so good, why do so many celebrities commit suicide? Why are so many of them depressed? I remember Jim Carrey stated this, the famous uh, comedian and actor. He stated that I wish everybody could be rich and famous so they could see that it's not worth it. <laughs> right? He went there. He was very famous in the 90s, in the early 2000s. 
And he says it was not worth it. He felt empty. He felt lonely. And there were many others who did the same. They thought that fame will make them happy. It brought them nothing but loneliness and depression. A famous rapper by the name of Napoleon, who was part of Tupac Shakur's gang, he states at the height of his fame, he had like two mansions and four cars, but he was the loneliest person on earth. Today he's a Muslim, living in Riyadh, running a small coffee shop, and he's extremely happy. When he was a famous non-Muslim rapper, he was lonely. When he's living a simple life as a Muslim, he is happy. So don't be deceived by fame. It's a false flag set up by shaitan to lead you astray. So never set your goals on the basis of fame. Beware of this, because it will lead you far, far astray. Along with fame comes Riyah, showing off. How do you want to show people how much knowledge you have, how good you are, how you better than them? How you want people to praise you, to look up to you? Beware of this. Showing off Riyah, in Islam it is considered minor shirk. By minor shirk we mean it negates your good deeds. It can earn you the hellfire. It's not major shirk, so it doesn't, it doesn't make you a non-Muslim, you're still a Muslim, but it negates the rewards of your good deeds. And there's the famous hadith narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa stated that on the day of judgment amongst the first people to be thrown in the hellfire will be the charitable person, the mujahid and the alim who did it to show off, who did it for fame. That the person gave charity so that people will call him generous. And the mujahid fought so that people will call him brave. And the alim gave his lectures so that people will say, awesome lecture, right? Those are the first people to be thrown in the hellfire. So beware of fame. Beware of showing off. If Allah gives you fame, that's from Allah. But don't seek it. Because seeking it leads you astray. Beware of making goals that are selfish. The believer is not selfish. The believer looks at himself or herself as part of an ummah. As part of a collective, of a nation. And when he or she sets their goals, it is something that benefits that ummah. It's not just something that benefits you. So do not be selfish in your goal setting. This is a wrong intention for a Muslim to have. Your goals should not be such that they benefit you and nobody else. Rather they should be goals that will benefit this ummah eventually. Beware of materialism and greed. al hakumut takasur hatta zurtumul maqabir that this competition to pile up the things of this world, it distracts you until you will die. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in Surah Takasur. This is what it is. People just want more and more. They have one house, they want another. They have one car, they want another. They have three wives, they want another. It never ends. You just want more and more. Relax. Calm down. Understand that having more is not going to make you happy. But having Allah's pleasure in your life, that will make you happy. So don't let your goals be materialistic. There's nothing wrong with wanting to earn halal money. There's nothing wrong with wanting to have a happy family life. There's nothing wrong with wanting uh, security and safety and peace in this dunya. But... These should be a means towards an end. This should not be the end in of itself. You should want wealth so that you can use it to please Allah. You should want a happy home so that you are emotionally stable enough to serve Allah. You should want security so that you can sleep peacefully at night so you can serve Allah. This is the way we should work. right? Our goals must all be related to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It should not be only for worldly reasons. Rather, we use this dunya to please Allah. We don't use Allah to earn this dunya. So be very careful when setting your goals. There's nothing wrong with saying that you want to be a millionaire. If the means to earning it is halal, and if you 
plan on spending their money on benefiting the ummah, there's nothing wrong with it. But if it's purely selfish and materialistic, then we have a problem. Well, we need to take our second break now. When we return, we will continue talking about those type of intentions that you need to avoid when setting your goals. So don't be away. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this break. Rising costs are making it increasingly difficult for those who are less fortunate. All through the year, adults and children from underprivileged backgrounds require diapers. Each month, 3,500 diapers are distributed to the needy. Allah, Allah, you are my own. Help us help them this 2015. We hope to step up the diaper drive. Together with your assistance, we can make a difference. Diapers for both adults and children are needed in sizes S. ML and XL. Drop off all diapers at 189 West Road in Overport. And for further information, you can contact Sister Fatima Jauji on 031-208-1601 or you can contact me, Sister Aisha Jamal, on 084-304-1683. The Diaper Drive Challenge on Yaddle and Sal. Sabra, CMH Nissan is giving away a dance and go. Huh? To who? Well, to community radio stations. Whoa, we need to win that for Radio Lansara, man. Yeah, but we need help, man. But who can we ask? Um, I'm sure our listeners will help, but what would they need to do? It's simple. Visit CMH Nissan's website and share our page using the social media keys. www.cmhdatson.co.za forward slash share and go forward slash Radio Alansar. That's it? Yep, that's it. The radio station that has the most shares wins the Datsun Go. SMS your comments during your favorite shows on Radio Alansar. SMS 37190 followed by RAA and your message. SMS is cost 1 Rand 50. Water awareness in the life of a Muslim. Fact. The average person uses 6 liters of water during wudu. The sunnah amount we should try to use is just 775 milliliters. Alansar. Promoting the Islamic worldview in this part of Africa. Northdale. 105.6 FM Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh You're listening to Living Islam on Radio Al-Ansar I'm your host Ismail Kamda And we're talking about the hadith on intentions Innam al-a'malu bin niyat That every action is judged by its intentions And the relationship between this hadith and goal setting That when we set our goals There must be goals that are pleasing to Allah And not goals that are uh, materialistic, selfish, or for fame. When we set our goals, they also should not be harmful. And we will talk about this in more details in Hadith number 4 in, in 4 weeks time inshallah. But this also comes under intentions. Do not set a goal that is going to eventually harm anybody else. Because our religion is a religion of peace, it's not a religion of harm. We are prohibited from harming people. The only time that Islam allows you to fight is when it's in defense of the innocent and when it's in defense of justice and when it's in promotion of peace. Otherwise, the status quo of a Muslim is that we don't harm people, neither with what we say or with what we do. We are a constructive community, not a destructive community. So beware of setting goals that are destructive. Beware of goals that tear the community apart that cause harm, that cause uh, disunity, that cause problems in society, that break up families. Beware of all of these type of goals. Make sure that the goals that you are setting are those which are constructive, which bring people clo- closer together, which help people to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beware of setting goals that are unjust. Always, as a believer, in everything you do, Always focus on justice because we are the Ummah of justice. And understand this much Allah never takes the side of the unjust. Those people who are committing injustice in the world today, they will eventually get what's coming to them. Don't think they're getting away with it. Eventually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them what they deserve. And if you too, choose to chase after goals that are unjust, you too will face the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to summarize the types of intentions we should avoid, we should avoid setting goals 
on the basis of fame, showing off, greed, materialism, selfishness, harming others, or injustice. On the flip side, let us now look at those goals which are pleasing to Allah, which count under ikhlas niyyah, which count under noble goals. And just to remind you, why do you, does your goal need to have uh, a good intention? Because if you have a goal which is in of itself noble, and the method to earning it is halal, and this goal has an intention that is pleasing to Allah, that Allah is going to bless that project. Allah is going to help you achieve that goal. Allah is going to help uh, put barakah in, the, in that effort. Allah is going to help you in miraculous ways that you never imagined. And you're going to be rewarded for chasing that goal as well. So this can become a huge uh, you know, opportunity for you in dunya and akhirah. So you don't want to squander this. Understand this much. Goals that are pleasing to Allah benefit you in this world and the akhirah. So what are the go- intentions we should have in setting our goals? Of course, our number one intention is that whatever we do, we do it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything you do. Whether it's going to work, whether it's starting a business, whether it's writing a book, whether it's delivering a radio program, whether it's going to school, whether it's spending time with your family, anything you do can be rewarding if it's done for the pleasure of Allah. So if you choose to, for example, if you choose to write a book, if you're writing a book so you can become famous, there's no reward in that. But if you're writing a book so Allah will be happy with you for writing something beneficial, then you can get reward for writing the book, for every step you took in writing the book. You can get reward for every person that read that book, for every person who benefited from that book, for every person whose life was changed by reading that book. This can become multiplied reward for you over and over again. And this is something many of us don't think about, that when you do things for the pleasure of Allah, the reward is not once off. Very often, especially when it comes to goals that benefit people, the reward is multiplied. It has a domino effect. Think about it. Who, Imam al-Bukhari, when he wrote Sahih Bukhari, it benefited people from that time right until today, 1,100 years later. That means for every person who benefited from Sahih al-Bukhari over the past 1,100 years, Imam al-Bukhari gets the reward, inshallah. That's powerful. And that's the importance of having a goal that's pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It can become a, sword, a source of uh, sawab jariyah for you, of continuous reward for you, even after you die, if that goal continues to benefit people. So for example, if you open up an orphanage for the sake of Allah, even if you pass away, as long as orphans continue to benefit from it, you continue to get the reward. If you started a homeless shelter for the sake of Allah, as long as homeless people are benefiting from it, even if it's a hundred or two hundred years after you have died, you continue to earn the reward for the sake of Allah. If your goal was to set up a masjid in an area that had no masjids, every person who prays salah in that masjid, for as long as that masjid exists, you will get the reward of that if you set up the masjid for the sake of Allah. So this is something powerful. That when we set our goals, we do it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not for anything else. This way, whatever you do, it becomes a source of of sawab al jariyah for you. Would pleasure of Allah, the second goal we should have for anything that we do, the second intention we should have, is to earn Jannah, to earn paradise. That whatever we do, it should be Jannah focused. It should lead us towards Jannah, not away from Jannah. Have a business that leads towards Jannah, not a business that takes you away from Jannah. So don't sell things that are haram. Don't use haram capital to start up your business. Don't invest in haram companies. Because that business will lead you astray. You don't have to answer to Allah on the day of judgment. For every cent you earned and every cent you spent. Set up a business that is halal. A business that is going to benefit people. A business that is going to bring value to people's lives. 
and do it for the pleasure of Allah and this can lead to Jannah. Your business can take you to Jannah. Look at Usman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. He was a wealthy businessman, a millionaire of his time. Whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would ask for someone to spend in the path of Allah, Usman ibn Affan would do so. And he would, you know, uh, buy off wealth for people and, and fund the entire army of the Prophet sallallahu and he would do all of these things. And this was the means of him earning Jannah. He was a businessman who used his wealth to earn Jannah. You can do this as well. So make sure whatever path you embark on, whatever goals you set for yourself in life, they are leading towards Jannah and not away from it. A third intention behind any goal that you set is that that goal must make this world a better place. At least for somebody. Yes, you can't make this world a better place for everybody. But if each of us is trying to make this world a better place for somebody, it will slowly become a better place for everybody. So set goals that are beneficial to others. The Prophet ﷺ stated in a hadith that we will discuss in detail inshallah in two weeks time that the best of you are those who are most beneficial to mankind. Therefore, your intention in goal setting should be to benefit mankind, to benefit others, to benefit people, to make this world a better place. It goes back to what we said earlier. Don't set goals that are selfish. Set goals that are beneficial. Set goals that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Set goals that make this world a better place. So, make sure that whatever you're working towards, others are benefiting from it as well. And this can take place in so many different ways. It could be a project like an orphanage or homeless shelter or something to help uh, the refugees or to help the BDS movement. Or it could be something, you know, religious like doing da'wah or writing a book or getting involved with Radio al Ansar. Or it could be something, uh, you know, uh, business related that you are selling a product that benefits people, that makes life easier for people, that, that uh, brings people closer to Allah. Whatever it is, Make sure that you are bringing value to society. That you are making this world a better place. That you are contributing to the upliftment of society and not the destruction of society. I mean, think about it. So many of us, we sell things that are destroying society. I mean, how many Muslims see nothing wrong in selling cigarettes? Even though they won't smoke it themselves. Ask yourself a question. By selling that pack of cigarettes, are you making this world a better place or a worse place? Are you benefiting someone or are you harming that person? When you give someone a pack of cigarettes in exchange for money, you're basically telling a person, go kill yourself, I don't care, I'm getting rich off you killing yourself. Because statistically, smoking is one of the biggest killers worldwide. And really, I'm bringing this up because it really sad. Recently I was uh, doing dawah to a Christian gentleman and... Uh, this, this man, he told me that if you Muslims are so religious, why is it that here in Durban, most smokers are Muslims? And I asked him, what do you mean? He said, most of the Christians he knows refuse to smoke. They know it's harmful. They know it's bad. They know it's something that God wouldn't be pleased with. But everywhere he goes, he sees Muslims smoking and selling cigarettes and you know, smoking when coming out to the masjid and smoking when breaking their fast. He says he can't take our religion seriously because we don't take our own health seriously. And I told him, I agree with you. I agree that this is haram, it is bad. It is something that's a problem with the, with the community. Don't judge the religion by what the people are doing. It is their mistake, it is their sin, it's not the religion that's at fault. But brothers, understand this. We're talking about goal setting. Make sure that what you do benefits others. Make sure that what you sell benefits others. So if you are selling something in your shop, look at it. Is this thing that you're selling productive? Is it beneficial? The person who's buying it, will it help them or will it harm them? If it's going to harm them, then you are making money of harming somebody else. How will you answer to Allah for that? How will you answer to yourself for that? What if somebody who used to buy cigarettes from you every week got cancer because of it and died? 
Do you realize you were you were the part of the cause of his death in exchange for money? Have you ever thought of it that way? This is something that we seriously need to think about. Do not set goals that are harmful. Set goals that are beneficial to society. So we need to take our last break now. When we return, we will recap uh, whatever we have discussed uh, thus far. And we will conclude on this hadith on intention. So don't go away. We'll be right back after this break. Radio al the only Muslim community radio station in KZN. Revival Sunnah. One of the most beautiful set of verses in the Quran are the last 10 verses of Surah Al-Imran, Surah number 3. In these verses, Allah Ta'ala discusses the qualities of Ulul Al-Bab, the people who possess understanding. It is also a sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to recite these verses when he would wake up from his sleep. Need an Iman booster? MuslimCentralAudio.com has over 60 inspiring speakers and 50 reciters from around the world. That's over 6,000 lectures and 50 complete Quran recitations with new content uploaded regularly. Easily subscribe via emails, iTunes, podcasts, or over 100 Apple and Android apps. Our podcasts are accessible from most tablets and smartphones. Over half a million downloads per month. Be inspired and give your Iman the boost it needs, inshallah. Visit www.MuslimCentralAudio.com. That's MuslimCentralAudio.com Children are a great blessing from Allah. With their tender hearts, children can be molded into righteous people only with a positive and tender approach. Ibn Masood is a school for special need learners situated at 133 S&D Road, Sydenham. Sponsor a learner for just 40,000 rand per annum or 3,350 rand per month. This will enable the learners to get the required therapy to improve his or her overall skills. Call Soda Onuwera on 031-208-1601 for more information. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anh narrated, I never saw anyone who was more compassionate towards children than Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Breaking news. Let us know what's happening in your part of the world. Email all your community announcements to admin at alansar.co.za and inshallah we will gladly air them for you on your favorite Islamic community radio station, Alansar. The sun, the sand and a mocktail in my hand. Summertime, Radio Alansar. Howick, 105.6 FM. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're listening to Radio Walansar. This is Loving Islam and I'm your host Ismail Kamda. Today we begin our first discussion for the month of January 2016 for the new year of 2016 and we are talking about self-help tips from the hadith uh, taken from my book 10 self-help tips from 10 authentic hadiths. Again the ebook is available for free on my website islamicselfhelp.com if you visit the website and click on the button free ebook you can download it and you can follow along with each hadith that we are discussing on the show and this week we discussed hadith number one in the book which is the hadith of intentions that every action is judged by its intention and everybody will get what they intended now this hadith was uh, narrated at a very interesting time when the Prophet ﷺ and his companions were migrating from Makkah to Medina and we know that this migration from Makkah to Medina this hijrah it was one of the greatest acts of worship that they did but there was one man who migrated from Makkah and Medina because he was in love with a woman in Medina. So he didn't go there uh, for the sake of Allah. He went there to marry this lady. And he got her, he married her. And you know, they were happy. And so the Prophet ﷺ, if you go with the full hadith, he states that every action is judged by its intention and every man will get what they intended. So whoever migrated for the sake of Allah and His Messenger, then their migration is for the sake of Allah and His Messenger. But whoever migrated for a woman or a piece of this dunya, then they will get what they intended. So the full context of the hadith is in light to this situation, that if you had to do something like move from one country to another, but if you did that for the sake of Allah, that you wanted to live in a better environment, you wanted to live in a more Islamic environment, you wanted to bring your kids up in a better environment for the sake of Allah, that becomes an act of worship. And you will get what you wanted, which is the pleasure of Allah. 
But if you made the exact same journey to the exact same place, but you did it for something of this dunya, more money, you know, uh, woman you were in love with, or, you know, whatever it was, you'll get that. You'll get that more money. You'll get that person you wanted to marry. But you won't get any reward for that action. Why? Because it wasn't done for Allah's sake, it was done for dunya. So you will get the dunya and not the akhirah for it. And what this hadith teaches us is that, you know, don't underestimate your intention in anything. In anything. Even if it's moving from one place to another, why are you moving from here to there? You know, you need to ask yourself this question. Because the intention behind that move can make it rewarding or not. So we were talking about this hadith that every action is judged by its intentions. But we were talking about it in relationship to goal setting. That every goal that you set, there's always a motive and an intention behind it. You need to ask yourself, uh, you know, what's my intention? What's my motive? Is it something beneficial, to, uh, is something beneficial and pleasing to Allah? Or is it something displeasing to Allah? Because this will affect your entire life. Think about it. If you've set your goals for the next 10 years, and all of these goals are displeasing to Allah, or they are leading to a result that is displeasing to Allah, or the path to achieving them is haram, then guess what? You are setting yourself up to commit sin after sin after sin for 10 years. How do you think that's going to look on your scale of deeds? Right? For example, maybe your goal is to become a millionaire. But the way to achieve that goal is you're going to get involved in riba, in interest. You're going to sell things that are haram. You're going to do whatever is displeasing to Allah. You don't care. You're just doing it because you want that money. <clears throat> right? So you have a haram goal towards a halal end because becoming a millionaire is halal. But what happens here now? You are now a millionaire based of haram money. So now it's haram money. So it's a haram millions. It's not a halal millions. So now the end result is not halal either. But, but why did you want to become a millionaire? See, this is what you've got to ask yourself as a Muslim. Why? For example, I want money so that I can fund my own dawah projects. Right? That's why I want money. Why do you want money? Is it to help people? Or is it to commit some major sins that you can't afford to commit right now? You have to be very honest with yourself about this. If your goal is to use haram means uh, means to become a millionaire so that you can commit major sins that you can't afford to commit right now, you are setting yourself up to commit sin upon sin upon sin. Not just the end, but the entire road is sinful. And Allah will not help you there will be no barakah and peace in your life and you will waste the next few years of your life doing something that will harm you in this world and the afterlife. So be very, very careful about your intentions. On the other hand, if your goal was to produce a product that is going to benefit millions of people and to sell it at a good price so that millions of people can afford it and buy it and then that money would make you a millionaire and you will use that money to fund orphanages and to help the refugees and to assist the dawah now every step of the journey becomes rewarding to Allah because you are helping people you are benefiting society you are earning halal money and you are working towards a goal that is pleasing to Allah so you are getting rich in this world and the akhirah at the same time. You are building money in dunya and you are building good deeds in the akhirah at the same time. That's what's happening. This is just how powerful that intention is. So be very careful with your intentions. And we said the intentions we need to avoid are anything related to fame, showing off, greed, materialism, harm, injustice and selfishness. These are things that the Muslim must avoid in setting his goals or her goals. Don't do things for the sake of becoming famous. There's no, there's no benefit in becoming famous. In, in fact, it's a headache. Uh, when you're famous, people are tweeting about you and anything mistake you make, they're going to post WhatsApp messages about you and the paparazzi are going to be taking photos of everything you do. It's a big headache. You don't need fame. Don't worry about it. It's not important. If anything, it's going to make your life more miserable. So, don't make fame an intention. Showing off, what are you going to get out of that? The hellfire, you know, uh, fake self, 
You're going to be a fake person if you're doing things to show off. Because what happens when you do things to show off? You act pious, but you're not pious. So you fake. You really want to live the rest of your life as a fake? And have to face Jahannam in the afterlife on top of that? It's not worth it. Avoid Riyah. Avoid showing off. Greed and materialism. What will that lead to? It will lead to you never being satisfied. It will lead to you never being content. It will lead to you never experiencing inner peace or happiness. It will lead to you just wanting more and more and more until you go crazy. So don't make materialism your goal. Harm and injustice? We really can't even think about that as a believer. We don't harm people. We are the most just of of people. So don't go there. Selfishness? You're going to live a lonely life if you're selfish. The only way to be happy is that you care for others just as much as you care for yourself. That you love for your brothers what you love for yourself. Abandon selfishness. It only creates misery and loneliness. And we said the intentions you should have is to please Allah and work towards Jannah and to make this world a better place to bring value to society and to benefit humanity. When you are setting your goals, you need to keep all of this in context. Is this goal and the means towards attaining it pleasing to Allah? Is it leading to Jannah or away from Jannah? Is it going to make this world a better place or a worse place? Is it benefiting humanity or is it harming people? This is a very serious issue to think about. And when you, when you set your goals with all of this in mind, The end result is a goal that is noble, a goal that is worthwhile, a goal that is going to earn you miracles and the assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is a goal that will make you happy before you even achieve it. Just knowing that every day you are working towards something noble that will bring you happiness. And this is, this is the amazing thing of, of, of a good intention. When you are working towards wrong ends, you're never happy. Not now, nor when you achieve the goal. But when you're working towards a noble cause, a noble end, you are happy while you are working towards it, and you are happy when you receive it as well. So, this is the topic of intentions and how it relates to goal setting. Next week, we will look at hadith number two in the book. And for those of you all who did not join us earlier, I'm talking about my free ebook. 10 self-help tips from 10 authentic hadiths, which is available for free on my uh, website islamicselfhelp.com we are talking about hadith number 1 from the ebook next week we will discuss hadith number 2 which will uh, be the hadith on the importance of earning your own income yes there are hadiths which talk about the importance of earning your own income. And we will talk about the hadith next week and how important that hadith is with relates to personal development, especially nowadays when so many people are trying to take shortcuts to getting rich. This hadith is very, very important. So next week's topic is the hadith on the importance of earning your, your own income. And if you want to read about it, again, the ebook is available at islamicselfhelp.com. With that, we come to a conclusion with this week's episode. And next week, inshallah, we will discuss the importance of earning a halal income or earning your own income from the authentic hadith. Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Social expectation drowns us all inside. What you have should be what I want.